In this video, I'm gonna talk about possibly the biggest scam that happens in the HVAC industry every single summer when it starts to get hot, and it involves this right here. Now, for those of you that don't know what this is, this is a capacitor, and it's like a little battery that gives your AC unit an extra jolt of energy when it first kicks on. Now, I've heard of people being charged $2,000 to replace this piece, and guess how much it is? $10. That's right, these capacitors cost about 10 bucks and people are charging $2,000 to replace them. I don't know how these guys sleep at night, but I wanna help you as a homeowner, as a DIYer, learn how to check this item, how to replace it yourself, and how to do it safely. So let's get right into it. Okay, so the first thing that you always wanna make sure you do is disconnect power. So we're gonna take our disconnect, pull it straight out, and then we can flip it 180 degrees and slide it back in and that will just kind of store this unit. And the way you can tell is if the on is in the upright, that means it's connected. But if, in, if the off is in the upright position, it's just being stored. So you can see there's no resistance and it's just sitting in here. So the first thing we need to do is access the electronics of our AC unit. It's typically gonna be a panel on the corner of the unit like this one, but in some older units, it might be a little bit different. So you might have to search where that panel is. Now, if you're curious about this tool, I use this tool all the time. This is a Klein 7-in-1, and as you can see, these bits come off, and they're interchangeable, so you have bits from quarter inch all the way up to half inch. And the nice part is if you have a really tight space, you can make this about half the size of what it normally is. You can get that off, and you can also chuck it on your drill. You can find this in our Amazon store. Simply go down to the video description, and I'll have it linked right there. Okay, so now that we have the cover off, you'll notice on your AC unit that there's a cylinder looking object and this is your capacitor. Now, hopefully you can see the label on yours. Sometimes they're kind of worn out and we'll go over how to check the size if you don't have a label, but something to be very cautious of, even though the power is turned off, like I said, this is kind of like a battery so it can hold a charge. So the first thing that we're gonna do, uh, being careful not to touch any of the terminals, is we're gonna take this capacitor loose. So we'll take this screw out. And we'll just pull this strap aside so that it's now free hanging. So now that it's free, we're gonna grab the insulated ones and just pull them off and take a picture. If you don't know where these wires are supposed to go and can't read schematics, just take a picture or even a video so you know where they go. So now that we have all of the wires off, again, being careful not to touch any of these, we're gonna take an insulated screwdriver and we're just gonna arc all of these together doesn't matter which orientation, just arc them all. And that's going to safely discharge this capacitor so that there's no threat of potentially getting electrocuted. Now I've never been popped by one of these, but from time to time I've heard of people getting popped and it's not fun. You don't wanna do that, so make sure and discharge it. So something that people ask me all the time is how do I even know to look at the capacitor as a potential item that's bad on my system? And here are some of the symptoms that you'll see if you have a bad capacitor. So there's two main components on your condensing unit. There's the fan and there's the compressor. So in some instances, the fan will be running, but the compressor, that buzz sound, will not be happening. And all you feel is cold air coming out of the top. That's one scenario. Or you could have the compressor running and the fan is not. In which case, it'll get really hot because it can't dissipate that heat. But if you go out there, you'll see the compressor running. The third scenario is you go out there and nothing is happening, meaning that both of these terminals on the capacitor has gone bad and that's another indication that your capacitor is bad. Now on that note, if you open up the side panel, just do a visual inspection first. If you see that the terminals on your capacitor are not pointing straight up like this, they're kind of bowed out and mushroomed out, that's a perfect indicator that your capacitor is bad. If you see anything burnt, sometimes in the south, uh, we saw snakes and lizards and stuff get caught in here, that's a great indicator that it's bad. Um, but just do a visual inspection and see what it looks like. A lot of times, just visually, you can say right off, okay, I think the capacitor is bad. You can either purchase one that's the right size or throw in one of these Turbo 200s. Okay, so now that our capacitor is out and discharged, we're gonna go ahead and check what the microfarads are on your unit. Now, this is really important if the label on your capacitor is just worn out and you can't read it. If your unit is still functioning, this is a great way to check and verify what type of capacitor you have. So we're gonna go over to this setting right here. We're gonna click mode, and this will be a little bit different on each of your multimeters, but you're looking for this UF. 
That stands for microfarads. So what we're gonna do now is take one lead, doesn't matter which one, and we're gonna put it on the C terminal. And then we're gonna take one and put it on the hermetic. Hold it down for a second and see what you got. So 44.9. So that's really close to our 45, which is this first number. And then we have plus five. Some of them have a dash five. The plus doesn't mean you wanna add these together. It just means the larger number is for your compressor and the smaller one is for your fan. So next we'll check between common and fan and we should have five microfarads. There we go. So if you don't have a label, whatever number comes up between common and hermetic, that's gonna be the size of your compressor uh, part of the capacitor. And whatever comes up between common and fan, that will be for your fan. Now, another way, if your capacitor is bad, doesn't show a reading on here and it doesn't have a label, I wanna show you now how you can verify what capacitor you need to purchase. So this website is called repairclinic.com. And it's great because you can punch in your model or serial number of your condenser, and it will give you a parts list of all of the different common components of that unit. And you can simply click on the capacitor, see what size it is, and that will verify what size capacitor you need to purchase. You can then purchase it on Repair Clinic, or you can purchase it from Amazon, but you now know what size it is. Now something to note is that each of these capacitors will have a different thing right here that says plus or minus a certain percentage. Now this particular one is a 45-5 with plus or minus 6%. So that means if we measure between hermetic and common and we get a number that is below or above 45, that means that this capacitor is bad. Now you'll notice on this one, this is a 35-5 with plus or minus 5. And so you're gonna to wanna to base your readings, whether this is good or bad, based off of this 5%. Now, a lot of times when a capacitor is bad, when you go to check it between, say, common and hermetic, you'll see OL on the multimeter. And if there's no reading on the multimeter, that means that that capacitor is bad. So now that you know how to check and verify the size of your capacitor, I wanna show you a really awesome tool to have as a DIYer and even as an HVAC contractor, and it is this guy right here. This is the Turbo 200 Universal Capacitor. Now this might seem a little bit confusing, but we're gonna explain exactly how this works. This unit will fit any condensing unit, so it takes all the guesswork out of what size you need to purchase because you can turn this capacitor into any size capacitor that you need for your system. Now these are about 70 bucks on Amazon Prime, so a really cheap price to pay in the event that your capacitor goes bad and you don't know what size it is. You don't wanna go out to your unit and take it apart just to see what size it is. You can pick one of these up, leave it in your junk drawer, leave it in your garage, and be prepared on the next hot day of the season when that capacitor goes bad. And you can potentially save like $2,000. Okay, so I'm just gonna empty out the box and show you what contents comes with this capacitor. So we have a strap that we can put around this and attach it securely to the unit so it's not gonna be jingling around comes with a big self-tapping screw to secure it. And it comes with one, two, three, four, five jumpers. Now I'm gonna show you exactly how to use this and we're gonna use the same capacitor 45.5 as an example. So you'll notice the top pins here are labeled. So this white one here is a five, two and a half, 10 microfarad, 20 microfarad, 25. Okay, so let's start with the 45 aspect of it. So we're gonna use simple addition here. We're gonna take 20 plus 25 equals 45. So we're gonna take a jumper and we're gonna jump this 20 to the 25. And that now just gave you a 45 microfarad capacitor. So when we go to install this, the center pin is our common. So we're gonna connect the common wire there. And then the wire that used to go to the hermetic pin right here is now gonna go on any of these pins where these two jumpers are. So you can connect it in any of these four locations here, and that will give you 45 microfarads. And then for the fan terminal, we're simply gonna take the wire that used to be connected to the fan, and we're just gonna connect it to this five microfarad terminal, any of these three here. And that is it. It's that easy to install the Turbo 200. And we'll show you how to install this on our unit right now, but a couple other features. These are all made in the USA. They last a really long time. 
and as you can see these have a five-year warranty something that most capacitors do not have okay so since this capacitor is the same size as our old one we could actually use this strap okay so now that the capacitor is securely fastened we're going to take our yellow wire that used to go to the hermetic pin and we're just going to drop it on this guy any of these four terminals that are connected to these two jumper wires our purple and red went to common so we're going to connect these two to the center terminals and then again our brown is going to go to the fan terminal which is this white one here and that's it it's as easy as that to hook up the turbo 200 on your ac unit for $70, this is a very cheap product uh, when you consider how much companies are charging to replace this item. Well guys, it's that easy to check and replace the capacitor on your air conditioner. Again, please be safe while doing this. I don't want anyone to get injured and I'm sure the comments will be flooded with people saying that um, you're not qualified to replace your capacitor, but I've learned to tune those guys out and I know that you guys are capable of doing this project yourself. Now, as usual, I've left links in the video description for the Turbo 200 as well as the Klein 7-in-1. Simply go down to the video description and you can find those products there. Now, a bad capacitor is one of the top four repairs that I see as an HVAC contractor. If you're curious to see what the other three are, check out this video right here and I'm sure you'll find it informative as well. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.